I'm dead now. But it wasn't always that way. Before I died, I was an old man. I was 78 years old, with gray hair and a gray beard, and I was stooped over from the gravity that had worn me down over time, much like a river wears on a boulder in its path. I was living alone outside the badlands of South Dakota, which is a remote land of sharply eroded buttes, pinnacles and spires that rise from the largest grass prairie in the world. Tourists would come and go, but no one stayed long. It was too far from the amenities of modern life. But I came to stay, and I lived among the cowboys who still remained, lean men in worn Levi jeans, who drove with beers on the dashboards of their old pickup trucks. They listened to Willie Nelson music and carried guns. I did not have much in common with the cowboys, but they were real, real blood and guts Americans. I lived in the almost forgotten and far removed town of Scenic, with a population of 46 or 49, the number depending on whether you counted the ghosts. It was a quiet, peaceful existence for an old man like myself. My wife was dead, I was retired, with no children or even close family, and I was still healthy enough to do most of the things I still enjoyed doing. I still had strong legs, and my heart remained healthy. And so I was alone in the world, as much as a man could be, I suppose, and I was free to choose my final destiny in life. And so I chose solitude, along with the isolation of that somewhat sad and remote southwestern corner of South Dakota, where the small remaining herds of wild buffalo roamed and the elusive antelope still ran free. By day I wandered the land by myself, alone in the vast chaparral with infinite vistas toward distant Nebraska and the Black Hills to the west, alone among the wind and the rattlesnakes, listening and watching to the lonesome landscape, stopping occasionally to take a photograph or to jot down a thought in the small pocket notebook that I carried with me wherever I went. I mostly kept to myself, living in my weather-beaten place called the Old Age Home, that I had bought for $7,000 from a Lakotan family who were moving to Rapid City. The place was cold and drafty in the winter and broiling in the summer, but my concerns were no longer of the flesh and I could easily put up with things such as lack of comfort and put that out of mind. If nothing else, time had toughened me. And because I often wore an old Grateful Dead t-shirt, the locals called me old deadhead. When I walked into the general store, the pretty young blonde woman who worked the cash register would ask, How's old deadhead today? And I'd reply, Not too bad. And when I walked into the bar each evening to wash down a beer or two, the old retired cowboy who worked the bar would ask, How's old deadhead tonight? And I would reply, I'm thirsty. And so it went, one day at a time, without too much time left in the world for old deadhead. But it was still like I had all the time in the world. And I was at last a poet, even if I only wrote for myself. The world has the look of glass and fire. It cares not about mercy, and nor shall I in these last days. I will burn my books, for they are full of hate and necessity, filled with the poison of philosophers. Make sure everything leaves you before you go, in a last gasp of hopeful innocence. And when you are finally clean, call your mother.
tell her you walk on water and no longer need her to hold you to this earth. Tell your friends you are spirit and memory. Tell them if they call your name you will not respond. Tell them you are beyond the blue. Tell them to leave you alone.